This video is sponsored by ASUS. What does a $699 laptop get I'm you? sure you're fed up of always hearing the same thing. Snapdragon laptops, AI, instant weight, long battery life. I know I am. If I'm gonna show you a laptop like this, I might as well just show you what it can do. Just know that this is an engineering sample, so expect performance to be better. However, it'll give you a good idea of what it can do. Let's get to it. I literally just unboxed this laptop. The very first thing I like doing is just heading to my network. Oh, yeah, I need Wi-Fi for that. I miss having numpads sometimes. Like I was saying, the first thing I like doing is turning on my network discovery because I like to connect to our local server. That's on. I'm gonna download Chrome. Make sure I install that. Close the default browser and have Chrome as my default browser. Let's see what I can uninstall here. I don't need this. Don't need this. I don't need them. This for me is where the chaos starts. I'm about to download a bunch of stuff. Okay, let's install the Creative Cloud. Well, that's happening we can also go ahead and install notion i like using parsec when i'm at home to connect to my windows pc download vs code because i use vs code for programming when i have time i also like downloading superhuman which is my emailing app photoshop install acrobat install lightroom classic install that's all i need for this davinci i like using davinci windows on arm discord download let's get that going discord download quite a lot here as you guys can see, there's just a lot happening right now, but uh, it's handling really well. I guess the last thing for me to do is to just download Spotify. Set that up, extract DaVinci. Well, all this is happening, extract. We're doing good, man. This is good. I guess I just want to show you guys a bit of the temps because it's been pretty smooth. 37 degrees peak towards the left of the computer. My whole point here is just to show you what happens when you try to install so many things at once on a laptop like this. Just trying to sign into GitHub sends me a text all the time. Again, I miss having a numpad. Just wanna make sure I can complete my VS Code setup and uh, that's pretty much it. Look, here's what I'll do, okay? I'll sign in into all my accounts and then I'll report back later. Actually, no, let's rewind. Check this out. I ran a quick battery test, even though this is an engineering sample, meaning that on retail models, performance will be better. Overall, I was impressed. So yesterday when before leaving home, okay, I decided to set this up as if I was going to use it for programming, which means I installed Dolly USL. I also downloaded Ubuntu and waited for that to install. And I decided to set up my S25 Ultra with link to Windows. By 5.30 PM, I was at 77%, with brightness at its max and volume set to high to medium, something like that. From updating Ubuntu to installing Node to even installing Docker, I was really enjoying my experience, especially with this keyboard, but I decided it was best to bring this home to try and use the Vivo book as if it was my own in this horrible freaking weather. To be honest, other than trying to figure out what small projects I could code, I spent my time watching car videos. Yeah, uh, but I got back on track. And that's all it takes to build it. I'm literally trying to find a little project I can make. Just a tiny little project where I could just run, uh, run it with a laptop using the USL and just have fun. See if I can show you guys how it performs. Up to now, it's been absolutely great. Um, I'm currently at 63%. I have Discord, uh, Docker open, Spotify, uh, VS Code, Chrome with a few tabs, my emailing app. It's good, good, good. The next day, check this out. Here comes one-handed mode oh yeah you need two hands to open it up but uh, instant wake is hella fast so in the mornings i don't know why you care about this but it's related to the video i promise i usually watch content when i'm cooking at full brightness 300 nits it's like um it's just not enough brightness um yeah, uh, by this time, 8 a.m., I was at 59%. I was consuming content. I tried to call my dad to wish him a happy birthday. Went to my home office to work a bit. It turns out I need a mouse to work. I can't do trackpads, no matter the laptop. But I enjoy using their keyboards, and this is one I like. As a whole, okay, as a whole, look at the performance. While I'm remotely connected to my PC at the studio, which is running DaVinci on a big timeline with quite some heavy log or 2.2 footage from my FX3, I think I can say that I'm very happy with the performance, especially when connected remotely to my Microsoft Windows PC at the office. Like what, uh, 90%? You know, the crazy thing for me here is that I'm working on a 
pretty heavy timeline but i'm literally using parsec to connect to my desktop at the office and it's running so smooth on arm right now i did have to change a few things that i'll, I'll explain later but currently we are at uh, 31 percent not freaking bad considering I'm, I'm emulating this stuff i'm just gonna explore this project And then I'll see you guys at the office. By 9, 10 a.m., this is what my battery consumption looked like. And I had a bunch of apps opened, of course, and my laptop power mode was set to balanced until I hit 29%. I also tried to call my dad again to wish him a happy birthday, but uh, no luck. I just ended up sending him a voice note. Anyways, let's go to the office and talk a bit about this chassis quickly because for a 16 inch laptop that comes at this price, it's sturdy like quite sturdy because I had no issues leaving this in the trunk. Check it out. The VivoBook 16, 17.9 millimeters thick, weighs around 1.88 kilograms. It has the smallest hinge mechanism to minimize the overall size of the laptop and rotates 180 degrees. This will get some fingerprints, especially on the blue model, but they have a silver one that should hide that. The clean logo on the lid is nice. The Snapdragon model does not have available RAM upgrades, but the Intel and AMD versions apparently do. This year is a laptop with two USB-C ports, both delivering 40 gigabits per second to connect two external displays, and either or can be used to charge your laptop. There's also an HDMI port, an audio jack, and a USB 3.2 port. On the other side, well, you'll also find another USB 3.2 port, the same one I was using for my mouse earlier on, and with it, a couple of light indicators. When you open this up, I realized yesterday that the speakers are honestly not bad in terms of quality, but I would have loved to see a bit more volume. These do support Dolby Atmos, so that's good. Then comes the keyboard and trackpad. Great keyboard. I love the pitch at 19.05 millimeters. The travel is so good at 1.7 millimeters. I really love programming on this. And the trackpad, well, it's pretty simple. Slightly smaller than the VivoBook S, but it's good and has a good click to it. It also supports Asus smart features. This allows you to quickly access commonly used settings and apps. It's pretty cool, I like it. The only thing about the keyboard I don't like is the layout. The shift button that sits with the backslash doesn't sit well for me. I'd change that, make it bigger if possible. So now I wanna show you Parsec, okay? Parsec is so good. You can literally remotely connect to whatever PC you want. I'm gonna connect to my, my PC right here. Check this out, connects right there. So simple, so good. You can change some settings right here with the resolution and stuff like that. Um, but this is what Parsec looks like and it's really, really usable. Look, to get Parsec working on ARM laptops is actually very simple. It honestly took a single Reddit thread to help me out and make it happen. At the beginning, it was actually super unusable. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to show you this, but if you right click on the executable, then go to the compatibility tab, click on change settings for all users. It's then suggested you check the box for launch as admin, then click on change emulation settings and click on use advanced settings. And here you need to change the CPU core to force single core. Then you can reboot the machine. And when you log into Parsec, go into the client settings and change your client render it to direct 3D 12 beta. That's it. Parsec will run so, so smooth, as long as you have a good internet connection. In fact, the input lag and delay is so minute, you'd have to be a competitive FPS gamer to even notice anything. With this, you can connect your work office PC, you can also connect your gaming PC, and play some games like Cyberpunk. Or maybe not. Yeah, no. This is not meant for that, it's just not it. I also tried Spider-Man. Um, with uh, no luck. You know, this isn't a gaming PC, so keep it PG, please. Even though my battery's dying, I was just on best performance, just to see how it would perform trying to play Cyberpunk, but yeah, no, it's not for that. Currently, um, uh, we're at 11%, it's a 125 PM. Apparently I have 21 minutes left. Been using it quite a lot with heavy stuff, but uh, I do want to talk about the display. I mean, yeah, this is no gaming laptop. Um, it's a laptop to get your everyday life work done, and maybe a bit more. You see, the display is 
perfectly fine. It's a full HD IPS display at 1920 by 1200p, which means it has an aspect ratio of 16 by 10, and they implemented a 60 hertz refresh rate with 300 nits of brightness. This is the bare minimum we now get on laptops from a brand like Asus. The only thing is that I would have loved to see an extra 100 nits. Sometimes I do find it's dim even when at full brightness, but all the other things sit well with me. The colors are good enough, I love the bezels, I also love the fact we have a full HD webcam with a camera toggle and hello windows implemented. Test, test, test. I hope you guys can hear me on this webcam audio test. Actually, it doesn't look bad at all. My skin looks pretty good. Let me check out the studio effects. Right here, there's like portrait light, portrait blur. Let's try that on. Oh, okay. Standard blur. Creative filter. Yeah, there's a few things right here that you can do. Pretty cool. By this point, after all the things we've been doing since yesterday, including dragging some files into the drive, we were at 5%. So from 3 p.m. yesterday, where we started at 93% until 7 p.m. where I stopped using it completely, I woke up to a battery life of 59% at 8 a.m. and that's where from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. we used Parsec a lot. And then using it on and off, we ended our test at around 2 p.m. So it's currently 2 p.m. and the laptop literally just, just shut down. So voila, it died. That concludes the battery life test. Just please take this with a green, green, green of salt because this is an engineering sample. But I think I got, you know, if I do a quick, quick, a quick math, like five to six hours of use. Four to five to six hours of use. But just know that like, you know, I've been like walking around, using it here and there, Google Chrome programming. Uh, I was using Parsec this morning. As you can see, it dropped a lot while I was using Parsec at home. I think uh, that concludes my battery life test. The one thing I'll do though, is that I'm gonna charge this. I'm gonna let you know how long it takes to charge. So it is uh, 2 or 1 p.m. From 2.01 p.m. all the way to 2.31 p.m., when I logged into the laptop from a fresh boot, we had exactly 52%. So expect 50% in about 30 minutes, I'd say. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, I'm reviewing a laptop and like my camera is on like my phone. It's called Windows Link, buddy. Pretty sick though. Then the next day I did some programming. Just wanted to say I'm starting work at 80% with power mode at balanced. Okay, so I found a project two nights ago. This here is all about coding a VS Code extension that will contain the most basic model of DeepSeek to help out with your coding questions. And honestly, even though I was following a tutorial, this took uh, longer than expected. In between listening to music, trying to understand the VS Code documentation to solve my issues, and simply trying to download the model into WSL2 in order to run it locally, I eventually got something done. As you guys can see, this is like the smallest model of Llama that we're currently running locally, and the CPU is just going berserk memory as well. It's like really, really slow. But it's it's so normal. Like, this is a Snapdragon X Plus laptop. It's not meant to do any of this. Like I'm even amazed it's like trying to work with me. Yeah, see that? It's starting to give me a definition. It took like, I don't know, like a couple of minutes to start like giving me something. Now, so I didn't have to run this from the terminal. I followed the tutorial and created some sort of HTML interface. By the way, I recommend the ES6 string HTML extension. I downloaded that and it works so well with my TypeScript file. Oh, um, just having a little bit of an instance where uh, oh, your cell just randomly stopped working. Maybe related to ARM, don't know what's going on. I need to restart my computer. Literally just reopening everything. Where is my history? Okay, we're back on track. Ubuntu, I don't know what happened. I had a stroke. Everything seems to be good though. Yes, sir. All right, Ugh, gotta rewrite this. Okay, I guess my computer should uh, feel better. I guess my computer just had a stroke, but we are back on track, baby. Gotta rewrite some stuff here, but uh, we're doing good. A placeholder, then I'll add a get div. Okay, and then this needs a Look, aside from that little hiccup, I can say that VS Code is fast on a Snapdragon X laptop. IntelliSense works really well, and I'm also happy I didn't cause any scratches to the chassis because of my bracelet while typing. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the moment of truth. I think this is gonna work. I really do hope so. Um, let's uh, start the debugger. Bam, bam, bam. Okay, it's running. Look at and that. And then we can go ahead and run 
this. Oh, okay, it works. Deep VS Code extension. And now we're gonna run the model here instead of running it on the terminal. So this is a little extension. Let's see how long this takes. Oh, it's thinking. Okay, it's working. Thinking, thinking. Hello. It, it's still talking. Okay. It, yeah. It's obviously slow. I mean, the better the computer, the faster models are gonna be. I don't know why this took me so long. It's 11 a.m. I mean, to my defense, the file template for VS Code did change. So I had to go into the documentation and change a few things in order to catch up with the tutorial. Um, so I got that working. Then I used Stack Overflow for a little few questions I had. I changed a bit of my code. But it's cool. I mean, DeepSeek running locally with a VS Code extension and not on the terminal. It's a cool tutorial. Shout out to Fireship. I love this guy. He makes the best freaking coding videos. From this, well, because I downloaded Docker the other day, I decided to use Docker with Portainer in order to run my DeepSeek model. This took a lot longer than expected. I thought that not having an NVIDIA GPU wouldn't let me run it locally, but that didn't make sense, so I eventually figured it out. I also figured out that the snipping tool has an image to text conversion tool, which is awesome. I use that to run my portainer command. Look, I'm sorry for all the programming jargon. What you need to know is that I'm setting up some sort of web interface that will allow me to properly create some containers to run Olama locally then download the smallest model of DeepSeek within and run it in order to compare it to some of the results I found online. Yeah, um, I think I took this review a bit too far. That's for sure. Before running the model, by the way, I was already at uh, 9%. Uh, yeah, I ran into a few issues, uh, so I had to plug it in, rerun everything, but uh, here we are. Anyways, I ran my DeepSeek model and it took a total of 20 seconds to run. That was, uh, that was quite fast, actually. Jesus, those uh, fingerprints. Uh, yeah. You know what I find weird? Is that the model does run quicker on the Docker container uh, through a llama running locally, obviously, than on my VS Code extension. Why? I'm not quite sure why. It could be because it's maybe isolated in the Docker container. I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure why the difference, but uh, yeah. Very interesting. Anyways, this, my friends, has been my own little VivoBook experience. Yeah, this took so much longer than I expected. Pretty crazy. This is the loudest I've heard this computer up to now. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Temps, 41.5. That's like peak. It's the most I've seen it. Really, really, really interesting. Pretty sick as a dev computer. Not only that, but you'll be able to do like pretty much anything you need to do like excel and things like that that's that's for sure i still have so many chrome tabs open trying to figure out some of the stuff i have to go through to troubleshoot code discord is open spotify is open the terminal is open vs code with the previous project is open windows link is open obviously i have docker open running some containers notion and superhuman look i don't want to take too much of your time this has been the asus vivo book review for you guys for the money it's definitely a solid contender you guys can check it out i'll leave a link down below if you have any any questions feel free to ask really happy with the overall laptop that being said i am filming a day in the life with the s25 ultra i don't know when that's supposed to come out but we're traveling to toronto for audi so yeah i'll keep you guys posted take care and don't forget to subscribe cheers